Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 4 for chapter 3. In this video, we will discuss existence and uniqueness for the differential equation and uh, we'll also um, introduce a concept called Voronskian in relation with the linear dependence of functions. Now let's begin with some theoretical aspects on the solutions to a general second order linear equation. So the theorem is um, listed here and let's look into the detail of it. So the theorem is about an initial value problem for this um, second order linear equation in the general form. So these y's function of t and the coefficients could depend on t. And then initial conditions are given, that is the value of y and the y prime at the initial time t naught is specified. And for this initial value problem, um, we will have existence and uniqueness of solution under the following criteria. So the conditions for that is um, the functions p, q, and g, which occurs as coefficients here, they are continuous and bounded on an open interval i, and this open interval i should contain the initial time t naught. Okay? If that is the case, then there exists one solution. So the exist solution and the solution is unique of this initial value problem and the solution is valid only on this interval i where we specified here. Now let's take an example to see how we can utilize this theorem. So we have the equation which is given here. So t squared minus 3t is in front of y double prime and then ty prime and then negative t plus 3 times y and the right hand side is e to the t. And the initial condition is given at t naught equals 1. Okay, And now we need to find the largest interval for t where the solution is valid we are not asked to solve it. Okay, so just to identify the interval where we will have unique solution. Okay, so um, we see that um, we need to um, apply the existence and uniqueness theorem. In particular, we need to verify the criterion, the conditions there for the existence and uniqueness. So the first step would be to rewrite this equation into the form that's stated in the theorem. That is, um, the term y double prime should have coefficient 1. So that's easily achieved by dividing the whole equation by this term t squared minus 3t. And let's factorize this. This is just t times t minus 3. So it's divided everywhere by that. And then we know that this function here is my function p, and this function here is q, and this function here is g. So we see that um, these functions are just polynomial and exponential function. So the function itself are defined and bounded um, for all bounded t, but it's in the fractional form. So if you want p of t to be bounded, or q of t or g of t, then the denominator cannot be zero, because in that case, the function blows up to infinity. Okay, And this gives us um, some values of t which are so-called bad. So t equals zero, or t minus 3 equals 0, that is t equals 3. So at these two points, um, these coefficients will go to infinity, therefore the solution cannot exist beyond them. Okay? So 
Now let's look at the initial condition. Where is it given? So T naught is one. So how can we find the largest interval containing T naught and avoiding zero and three? Well, we see that it's between zero and three. A visual way to um, identify this interval would be to draw the number line um, t, sorry, this shall be t here, and then mark the bad points, so called, so 0 and 3, they're bad, and we put a cross on it. And we identify the t naught, which is 1, so it's here, t naught is right here. And then starting from that point, we go to the left until we hit a bad point. And then we go to the right until we hit a bad point. And then we see the interval from 0 to 3, the open interval here, is the interval i, where the solution would exist and is unique. Okay, so now um, let us introduce this concept. Um, it's an important concept. Is called the Brom scheme. So let's go through the definition first. So let's say we are given two functions, we call it ft and gt. Then the Brom scheme of these two functions is defined as follows. So the Brom scheme of f and g, which in the end will be a function of t, is defined as f times g prime minus f prime times g. Okay, so it's a product of f g, but uh, um, um, one of them is taking a derivative, and then here the other is taking a derivative, and there is a minus sign. So here's a little remark that is a, an easy way to remember this definition. It could be using the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. So this Voronskian equals to the determinant of this matrix. So you put f and g in the first row, then you put the derivatives f prime, g prime, in the second row, and you compute the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. This will give you f times g prime minus f prime times g. Okay, so just a neat way of uh, remembering it. Now you may ask why should be interested in this particular function? Um, well, that's because uh, it's an important function. So the main usage of this Voronskian is the following. If the Voronskian of the two functions is identically zero, then these two functions are linearly dependent. Otherwise, they are linearly independent. So um, what does it mean that two functions are linearly dependent? So this is a concept similar to um, vectors. If you have two vectors and you say they are linearly dependent, then um, basically one of the vectors can be written as a scalar product of the other. And the same thing happens to two functions. If two functions are linearly dependent, then one of them can be written as the other function multiplied by a scalar number. Okay, so um, that means um, if you have two functions that are linearly dependent, then they are essentially the same function, because one could be written as a scalar multiple of the other. And uh, the Voronskian gives you an easy way to um, check that linear dependency. Okay, so what do we mean by that? So to be precise, let's formulate what we were just claiming. So if we know that the Voronskian of two functions f and g is identically zero, and then we're claiming that the functions are linearly dependent, what do we mean is that um, f of t can be written as k times g of t for some constant k. Okay. And this is if and only if, which means a implies b and b implies a. Okay, and let's do a little proof on that claim. So 
Let's first assume A, that is, the Bronskian is zero, and we'll try to show this relation. So what is the Bronskian? That is, f g prime minus f prime g is identically zero. So what does that imply? Okay, so let's look at the ratio between f and g. If we compute f over g, which is a function of t, and we differentiate that, then we can use the quotient rule, so g squared, and then we'll have f prime g minus f g prime, which we see that is exactly the negative of the Bronskian. And since we assume that is identically zero, then this is zero. And then if a function is, the derivative is zero, then this function equals to a constant k. Okay. So which prove this part b. And now, um, one thing I didn't say is that we can um, claim this provided that g is not a function that's identically zero. Okay. So for a function that is identically zero, it is linearly dependent with any function because then you can take the other function and multiply it by constant zero and you get a zero function. Okay. So in general, we are assuming these functions are not identically zero and we check their linear dependency. Now let's prove the other way around, that is b imply a. So on the other hand, let's assume that the function a f, f is uh, a constant k times the function g. And let's compute the Voronskian. So the Voronskian would equal to f times g prime. So we're putting f here and then f prime, that is k g prime times g. And then we see that it's identically zero. Okay, so therefore we proved this claim here. Okay, so now let's um, take an example to practice um, using um, the de definition of the Voronskian and check on how to compute it for a pair of functions and to see if they are linearly dependent or not. So the first function pair function f is e to the t g is e to the negative t okay and let's compute so f times g prime so it's just moving a negative in the front minus f prime times g so f prime is just et and then we see that this e um, cancels this e to the negative t you get one so this is negative one and this is negative 1, and we get negative 2, which is not 0. So we see that these two functions are linearly independent. Um, the next one, um, and f is sine t, g is cosine t. Okay, and then let's compute the Voronskian. So f times g prime, cosine prime is negative sine prime, and then f prime, that I get cosine times g. So what I get is negative sine square minus cosine square, which gives me negative one. So it's not zero. Okay, and then we see that sine and cosine, they are linearly independent functions. And the uh, next one is um, f is t plus one and g is four t plus four. And let's compute the Voronskian. So um, f times g prime, which gives me four, minus f prime, which is one, minus g. And then we see that this gives me four t plus four exactly cancels that as zero. Therefore, these two functions are linearly dependent. And in fact, we can also see that then the function g here um, you can take out the factor 4 and you get 4 times t plus 1, which is f. So we actually have this relation. Okay, and so um, that is all for this um, example. And I would end the video by um, stressing that the concept of linearly dependent or independent of two functions, namely using the Voronskian to verify that, will play an important role 
in the solutions of a second order linear differential equation. And more details and more examples and more concepts will come in forthcoming videos. And I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, I look forward to seeing you again next time.